Christmas Eve, everybody. Browns, Texans, big game today. Got some good news on Friday. Posick back, Christian able to play. Batonio, who hadn't practiced all week, did practice on Friday to make it questionable. So good news on the offense line, and the offense line needs a lot of help. Something Tony and I are going to be talking about here in a second. Walker, Walker had to have a minor procedure on his, uh, and there's no such thing as minor procedure as a surgery, but he had to have a minor procedure. And then finally, we got the news that uh, Juan Thornhill's out. Merry Christmas Eve to you, buddy. Merry Christmas Eve to you too. Uh, injuries, uh, offensive line got some good news. The defense is still missing Thornhill. Uh, you know, the Kitty Cats lost yesterday. I actually, in a way, think that's a good thing because now everybody's at eight wins. So the Browns win. It really puts them in prime position to get in the playoffs. Super Bowl Browns is right. But it's all about Joe Flacco. Yeah. Everything with the news about the injuries is all about Joe. Yeah, hopefully Joe can keep us keep going cool ahead and keep leading us into victory every week. But hopefully a better offensive line showing this week, maybe less turnovers, and just keep stacking those wins like we've been. Yeah, I think the big thing that really needs to be thought of today is – you win and you advance, but if you get one more win, even with forgetting with the Ravens for a second, let's say you clinch, it gives the Browns an opportunity to maybe take some players off the Cincinnati game. And that's actually becoming a storyline to me. That Cincinnati game, if you can clinch before that game, you give a chance to get some rest. Uh, Joel is questionable. Posick's back, B. Poro. Posick is starting today. Huge news there. Merry Christmas to you. Um, big key to me in this game. Obviously, Flacco keeps doing his thing, which I don't think there's any doubt. Turnovers. When you're playing a team on the road, you cannot have turnovers like they've had in the past week, Tony. It's killed them. That, to me, is a big story in this game. Can the Browns play a game that's clean, finally, on the road? Yeah, definitely the biggest key. Like, one of these games we saw last week with the Bears, I really don't think the Texans offense is going to be able to consistently move the ball downfield. Maybe they'll have a couple drives here or there. So, if the offense can just keep the defense in favorable positions, that unit should win us the game. Flacco will lead just enough scoring drives, and they should be able to get it done, but no turnovers. Yeah, I got, again, to so what someone said here, correct. The Browns cannot clinch today. Browns can clinch if they win two weeks in a row, though. Mm -hmm. Starting to shape up that way. So, I mean, there's like a 99% chance of them. But, like, look, they're basically clinching if they win today and next week. My point is if you win – these next two weeks, you can rest some players in the Cincinnati game. Agree with you, Lance. We, we, we agree. <clears throat> Someone shot a gun up here for me. Pittsburgh sucks. <laughs> That's the Christmas spirit. Pittsburgh sucks right there. My other key today is this. Can the Browns up into line that's tattered with the tackles? I mean, Christian and Hudson, they're doing their best, but they're not very good. Can they keep this talented defensive line? There's no Will Anderson today, which is a big break, and no C.J. Stroud, which is a big break, too, in this game. Yeah, that is the huge key because we need to have some sort of a running game, which is just lacked for good reason. We're throwing the ball so much to Flacco because we have to. The running game is just not moving the ball whatsoever. Stefanski doesn't want to fall behind getting those second and ten, third and seven. He wants to stay in these second and five, third and threes. And if we fall behind on first down, running the ball. So we could really use that to really help and put the game away at the end if we have a lead. But really the offensive line, if they can just – handle their business a little bit better. I know it's asking a lot. Posting back, like you said, is huge. Dude. Hopefully, Vitonio can go, but really looking for a better game from those guys. They really struggled. Bears are solid, but they struggled last week. Yeah, it's something to watch. At this point, Stefanski is going to look in the strands for people to – yeah, I mean, <laughs> you're right. And that's why, again, if you can win these next two weeks and clinch a spot after the Jets game, you get a long – week and then you could possibly rest players in the Cincinnati week and I'm starting to think that way it's like it would be nice to rest some players the week before the playoffs the Browns need rest yeah I mean they are that team they need they need to heal that's why clenching as quick as it can is big winning today is obviously a big key for it Case Keenum's the backup for Houston he's we've seen Case we know average he's average Case He'll make some plays. He'll th I guarantee he'll throw an interception at some point. Uh, he is not going to throw big. Dink and dunk. It plays right into the Browns' defensive hands. When you can play in a box, it just helps out so much. The Browns can play in a 10-yard box because he's not going to throw over 10 yards. Right. Yeah, that's a huge part of it. And the Texans' receiving room is not completely healthy. Tank Dell's done for the year. 
know Brown's probably going to play, but he's been dealing with that calf issue. We see with Thornhill how annoying and nagging those can be. So not a ton of health in the receiver room, not a quarterback. Should be able to keep the passing game to a minimum. Their running game is fine. It's not anything amazing. It, they can do it, but we should be able to shut them down pretty easily. And then really just keep their – if their offense can keep starting in own territory drives and not getting – gift wraps position by the our offense i don't see them scoring a whole lot of points lance i do think uh flack will throw over 300 yards today because that's what they're going to be doing here throughout um i will say i agree with tony to shorten games and to close games out you have to run at some point if you're up late you have to get these games to shrink that's why the browns games have been so long they're passing when you pass a lot the games get longer more plays are played so for the browns late running the game is key just not because I want them to run the ball. It's because you want the game to end when you're ahead. Go Browns. Give the Browns a nice Christmas gift. I agree with you, Dean Maz, about that. Is the early bye week hurting us now, lacking that break? Uh, it, it naturally is. Mm -hmm. I actually think that bye week, though, came at a great time. I think that bye week actually got them the Niners win. So I'm not going to say that bye week was bad because I actually think that's why they won the Niners game. They just needed to do a complete reset after the Deshaun Watson first injury. So, but yes, they need a break. I mean, again, I, I'm going to start touting this. Win today. Win Thursday against the Jets. Get a long break off. Really heal your players going to the playoffs. That's kind of what the Browns need here. Yeah, that bye week. I mean, Stefanski clearly even said that it affects them. They didn't even practice three days this week. They yep. had a walkthrough on Wednesday. So, clearly it was not ideal for them to have it that early. But it did come with good timing for the Deshaun injury. But really, kind of <laughs> ideal. Yeah, not exactly. having that clinching scenario. So, <laughs> We can clinch in front of the home fans on Thursday night, in front of the oh. whole world watching. Oh. That could be a better scenario than clinching on a random Sunday in Houston. That would be very fun. Very fun. Flacco sleeping 500 today. David, I would hashtag blessed if that were to happen. <laughs> it ain't going to matter. We're up by 20. Lance, I love these positive Browns. I think today's game is very close. I think it's very close. I think the Browns win 21-17, 16-10 in that range. I, I don't think there's going to be a lot of points scored today. I think you are going to see kind of a mutter in an indoor stadium, which is unusual. Um, I don't see this game getting a high score. Again, Case doesn't score a lot of points. Right. And I think the Browns today will actually match up very well with them. I do think the Browns' the offensive line is going to have some struggles again. Yeah, I, they've been struggling in the past, and this is a good unit, so I don't, we can't expect them to just sit there and play a perfect game. We're going to see downs wasted to pass protection. We're going to see some games where James Hudson just gets blown yeah. backwards and Ron Christian just loses. That's that's just the nature of where we're at right now. But hopefully they can limit those and we can kind of put together a more complete game, both in running and pass protection. Are you worried about Flacco coming back down to earth? I'm actually not. The only thing I'm worried about is Joe Flacco's health. Yeah. Keep him healthy. Honestly, I have no other worries at this point. Ravens are going to lose that next two. Cam, we'll see. Uh, we will see. I, I, I hate to say it. I think the Ravens are good. Um, I don't think they're going to win today in San Francisco, but that doesn't mean they're not going to win the next week. Um, I don't think the division's realistic. I hope I'm wrong. I see the Ravens winning one of these next two. Maybe I'm wrong. I hope I am. I think the more thing to me is, like, Browns need to get rest. How do we get rest? Browns need to heal their injuries. So, Tony, you like the Browns today, I'm assuming? Yeah, I think unless it's a turnover-heavy game like we saw in Indianapolis, I'm thinking it'll be like a 17-13. If we yeah. start to see both teams just giving it away like we saw in that Colts game, then we could see something up in the 20s, maybe even in the 30s. But shouldn't be a day where either offense really right. looks good. Probably going to be a pretty ugly yeah. game. But that's kind of the game the Browns love to be in. Lance, I will be here live at halftime and high here after the game. Real fast, Cavs had a great win last night. Great win. Jared Allen was wonderful. Uh, I actually think in the last week, this is this team's taking a new gear. I was really concerned about the Cavs three weeks ago, and right to be. They were just all over the place. I don't know what is stringing this together, but they have really played nicely without some str – I mean, no Mitchell. Mm -hmm. I mean, no Mitchell, no Mobley, no Garland, no Levert. And they won! And our new hot player, Sam Merrill, hurt his wrist. Tony, it's remarkable right now. It's really remarkable what the Cavs are doing. For everyone, and I was one of those not super impressed with the way J.B. Bickerstaff's been. You've got to give him a ton of credit for the last couple of weeks. The rotation was really good last night. You could tell he knew that the guys that were going, like Craig Porter Jr., had to play heavy minutes. And you could tell he was doing a good job getting guys back in the game. 
I'd say the best part is how free and moving this team seems. Like the yeah. ball, the ball movement is unbelievable. And hopefully that's something that translates when everyone comes back. I know obviously it'll slow down a little bit because you have so much talent with one-on-one -on -one scores. But if you can still find a way to keep that ball moving a good amount with the sprinkled in isolation and pick and roll, they're going to be a really dangerous team to beat. Yeah, uh, Lance, they took it personally that the media was all over them trying to fire JB. Look, I, I'm going to say it again. The Cavs did not start off well, though, Lance. Some of that criticism was very fair. But Tony brought up some really good things. And I'll tell you, the biggest thing I've seen is the Colby Altman drafting. That Craig Porter Jr. signing in the undrafted free agency, you can't put a price tag on. That was a tremendous find. I mean, Colby Altman gets dog. Great, great sign. Right. Great, great job. I mean, you cannot put enough on that. And the Sam Merrill, great good job. Kid was on fire for his wrist. Um, you know, the Cavs are really doing a great job using their ability to work hard, and they play good half-court offense. When they get back some players, there needs to be an internal discussion. Can we find a role for Craig Porter Jr.? Because he is a natural point guard. And yeah. he got on the suit. But Craig, Craig Porter Jr. is thinking naturally run the offense, and it's refreshing to see. Yeah, he just plays winning basketball. He makes great plays, very composed when he's out there. He knows exactly where he wants to get to, and he's just been very, very impressive. Tough shot maker, can make the right passes, can set up his teammates. He's been the engine of the offense when everyone's out, and it's great to see. It is wonderful. We both think the keys today are turnovers, correct? Yeah. So Browns need to limit their turnovers today. And then we both are saying it. The worrisome thing in this game is, can the Browns offensive line hold up? The Texans do have a good defensive line. They're without Will Anderson today. Big break about C.J. Stroud being there. Go Browns, Tony. Go Browns. See you at halftime and after the game.